In this video, I want to look at what's known as even and odd permutations. I'm going to call a permutation even if it is the product of an even number of transpositions. Equivalently, we'll call a permutation odd if it's the product of an odd number of transpositions. With these definitions, what I'm asserting is that every permutation is unambiguously either odd or even. It can't be both. So in the last video, I talked about how writing a permutation as the product of transpositions, the number of transpositions used is not unique. However, I am claiming that it's either going to be always be an even number or it's going to always be an odd number. The first thing I want to show, no matter how the identity is written as a product of transpositions, the number of transpositions is even. So I'm going to claim that the identity is always an even permutation. Let's let t1, t2, all the way up through tm be transpositions. And we're going to suppose that the identity is equal to t1, t2, etc., all the way up to tm. I'm going to let x be any number that appears in one of the transpositions t2, all the way up through tm. So I'm going to ignore T1 and then pick any number that I see anywhere in the transpositions T2 through Tm. Let's let Tk be a transposition of the form Xa. And we're going to suppose K is the last transposition, read left to right, in which X appears. So I'm going to take this product, I'm going to read it from left to right and find the very last instance of my selected number X. We then have that the transposition tk minus 1, the one directly to the left, is a transposition which is either equal to xa or one or both of its components are different from xa. So either it's exactly equal to xa, it's x and another number, it's a different number a, or I have two completely unrelated numbers. So we're going to look at each one of these cases individually. Let's start by assuming tk minus 1 is equal to xa. And then have that tk minus 1, tk, is going to be equal to xa, xa, which is just the identity permutation. We then have that the identity can be written as a product of n minus 2 transpositions. I could just go ahead and cancel these two terms and remove two of my transpositions. And this works because if my identity could be written as an odd number of transpositions, then I could repeat these processes and slowly remove two transpositions until I would eventually get epsilon equal to a single transposition, AB. And that's impossible since that would not be the identity element. My next case, I'm going to assume the previous element is of the form XB, where B is some number that's different from X and A. So I still have the x, but I've changed this second component. That then tells me that tk minus 1 tk is of the form xb xa. But this can also be written as xa ab. Let's double check this. So if I look at this one, we have that x maps to a, and then a remains the same. a maps to x and x maps to b, so a maps to b, and then b maps back to x. If I look at this one, we have x maps to a, a maps to b, and then b maps to a and a maps to x. So these are equivalent. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace tk minus 1 tk. I'm going to replace xb xa with xa ab. Then we have that the last occurrence of x was moved one position to the left. So I've essentially shifted my last occurrence of x to the left. Let's look at the next case. Let's now assume the previous element is of the form ca, where c is different from a and x. So this time the a remains the same, but we have a different element than x. We then have that tk minus 1 tk is ca xa. This is going to be the same thing as xc, ca. So let's double check that. In this one, I'm going to start with a. a maps to x, which remains constant. x maps to a and a maps to c, so x maps to c. 
And then finally, C maps to A. If I look at this one, A maps to C and C maps to X, X maps to C, and then C maps back to A. So these are equivalent. So in this case, I would replace the TK minus 1 TK with an XC CA. When I do that, just like my previous case, I have shifted the last occurrence of X to the left. So both of these two cases, I'm essentially taking my last occurrence of X and just shifting it to the left. For my last case, let's consider the previous element as BC, where both B and C are different from X and A. So these are two completely disjoint transpositions. I then have TK minus 1 TK is equal to BC XA. Since disjoint cycles are commutative, I can switch the order and write this as XA BC. So once again, I have shifted my last occurrence X one position to the left. And so with these four cases, I've now proven my theorem. If I have one of the cases two, three, or four, I'm just going to perform this rearrangement to shift X one position to the left. And I'm going to repeatedly do the appropriate case to shift X to the left until I'm only left with case one which would give me that it is an even cycle. To show this very quickly, let's suppose that T1 is equal to XA, and then I don't see an X anywhere in the rest of this. Then the identity of X would be equal to A, which is impossible. So no matter what T1 is, I'm eventually going to have to have one of these terms that will cancel it out. If I don't, then this cannot be the identity. So eventually using cases two, three, and four will reduce me down to case one. And with this, let's assume that we have a permutation, then it is either even or odd, not both. So it is definitive on if this is a product of even transpositions or odd transpositions. Let's suppose my permutation pi is both even and odd then the inverse is also even and odd. So I can also write the identity as pi composed with pi inverse. And this would then give me a contradiction. I can write pi is even and pi inverse is an odd, and then that would get me that my identity is an odd transposition. So it is impossible for a permutation to be both even and odd. And finally, with that, I want to define the alternating group. The set of all even permutations in SN is a subgroup of SN. The product of even permutations is going to be even, since even plus even is even. And the inverse of an even permutation is still even. So if I look at just the even permutations, I do have a subgroup. This is known as the alternating group and is denoted by AN.